Kind of Funny Live 2 is happening May 28th and 29th. It's a two-day event. The first day is going to be a completely ridiculous stage show. What we have planned this year completely blows last year out of the water. And I don't even know how that's possible because we were really stupid last year. And this year's somehow even stupider. Day 2, it's going to be full day of meet and greets. We're hanging out with, with all of us. A bunch of Rooster Teeth people are there. Funhouse people are there. Achievement Hunter. It's going to be a grand old time. There's going to be some games to play. There's going to be signings. It's gonna just, it's exciting. It's a really fun time. There's going to be exclusive merch. Oh, yeah. There's definitely going to be exclusive merch. Go to kindoffunny.com slash tickets to get your tickets today. There's a couple VIP tickets still available, so make sure if you want one of those, you act fast. <music> Topic three comes from Yasir Madauer from Patreon. He says, your video game's shame list, all console generations. Great slash famous mm. games you've never played, but you know you should have. And now, given your involvement in the industry. Oh, what? And the opposite. Games you wish you had never played. But those are two very different things. So I think he's <laughs> Let's saying, stick with the shameless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stick with the shameless. So what is it? What games haven't you played? I like right. the, the console generation thing. Okay. So, so like, where okay. do you want to start? start? I don't want to start on NES yeah. because we don't need the stuff before that. Unless okay. you think we do, Colin. I mean, I think there are must play games in that period. But I think that there Pong. are. Uh, well, no, there are, are, are you know, Miss Pac-Man. I think I you haven't played Miss Pac-Man. You're a fool. Um, you know, Galaga, Space Invaders. Um, but I, but they're so old now that I don't know that you know you necessarily you know Dig Dug and Cubert and stuff. I mean, these are foundational games, right? Mm-hmm. They're very important games um, that you should absolutely play. I mean, you have you really have some homework to do if you've not played those classic games. But I do th- agree with you that I think things start on the end. What are we counting by played? Beat, tried, dip your toe in the water. Where are we at? I mean, I think I that think, he's talking about. He's talking about beat, but I think that no. if we tried to play it, I think that if, that if we gave then. it the shot, it counts. Okay, okay, okay. Because we we tried. Because I've never like I, you know if we're starting with NES that era, of course, then I think le- the original Legend of Zelda. But I've played it. I've never mm. beaten it. I've never gone away through it. But I've played it. I've run around the overworld map and done stuff. And yeah, I don't think you need okay, to okay, beat okay. that game okay. if you okay. give it at least the shot to understand. Sure, exactly. How yeah, it yeah, plays yeah. and stuff. The funny thing is, is I don't, I don't know that there's anything in that era that I didn't play. Like on the NES. that matters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Master System is a different story. I, I didn't play almost what? anything on Master System. Well, there's some what? games like Alex. Like, I, and again, I have played these games, yeah, but like, I just, don't re- but I just don't remember them. Mm. Like yeah. the a- Alex Kid and, and what one and Miracle Roll? Yeah, what's a Wonder? Is there Wonder Boy? Is that the same Wonder? The I fuck you're talking about? I you're talking about. Um, they were kind of like seminal Master System games and Genesis games. Because another one just came out recently. Of Wonder Boy? I think Boy it's Wonder Boy or something. I think you're right. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of Genesis games I didn't play, but that's. Yeah, Genesis is other like, shit, right? Mega, yeah, Master System. I mean, again, I said this a long time ago. I didn't even know Master System was a thing yeah, until later. So it's like, I missed out on all of that. I think you're fine. Don't worry. Unless there was ports and stuff on other systems that I might have just played. Um, but I in mean, terms of NES, as games, be, being a Sega kid, there's tons of NES. I mean, I miss so much NES stuff and SNES stuff. Like, I, those are huge holes in my, in my you know, repertoire. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's the thing is like I you know, I've played Super Mario obviously, but have I beaten Super Mario Brothers? I don't know, probably not. I can't. I don't know where I would have done that. Oh man, sat down you and then the original that. Super Mario Brothers. You gotta do yeah, that. I mean, beating a game is a different story. If the, if the story is beating a game, then I'd never play it, and then I, I never beat even a lot of Nintendo kind of stuff like like uh, the Star Fox games. None of them. Like the, oh really? Yeah, like the, none of them. No, like not the, even sixty four. I think Adventure is the only one I beat. You you beat Adventure? Yeah. Um, like uh. <laughs> Like a lot of Donkey Kong games, like Donkey uh-huh. Kong Country One, I think I beat, and I don't think I beat, you didn't beat the other two. No, I don't think I. Oh beat Oh my them. god, this these were like these so were much. these were like rentals, you know. Like I was yeah. I wasn't really into platformers at that point, so it was like re- like SNES to me was. I was talking about this on our, our on, uh, on our AMA recently. Like if you're talking about beating games, and I guess that's what he's talking about, then like there's a lot of games that I didn't beat. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of games I did. There are a fucking shit ton of games I beat. Yeah. I never but, beat Metroid, but I played it enough. The original Metroid? The, the first it's a Metroid. fantastic game. It's fucking, it's fucking hard. hard as hell. That game is really hard. Yeah, I just I couldn't um, handle it. And Mega Man, none of them. Yeah, I mean, those are... My, I mean, to me, on NES, for instance, the must-play games are, like, the three Mario games, uh, six Mega Man games, three Castlevania games, three Ninja Gaiden games, the Dragon Warrior games, all four of those. I never beat any. I never beat like, the Dragon Warrior, never beat uh, Ninja Gaiden, never beat uh, Castlevania. See, then, I'll go as far as say I don't think I ever played a Ninja Gaiden. Oh my god, those games are fucking awesome. Saw it, oh, obviously. Oh, but like, that was always something you saw at a friend's house like before you put in Mario. They're possibly hard, but, but, but I mean, they're not impossible. They're ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then you have DuckTales, like a lot of the Capcom game, Chip and Dale's Rocky Ridge. Right. Right. All the first party stuff. Okay, going all the way up to like Star Tropics and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but there are even like later games like Yoshi's Cooking Show. I don't even know what the fuck that game is. Well, really that, that's not must play. But, but, fuck that. But, um, 
Dude, that was like so late. I mean, I had yeah. an SNES for like three years when yeah. that game came out. I don't even know what that was. It was dumb. This game is, but yeah, I mean, like if we're talking about beating games, like there's a shit ton of games I didn't beat because like you, you, you're a kid. Yeah, and like you just want to move on. And I, to me, it was like, uh, so for every Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask that I obviously beat the shit out of. I mean, there were games on N64 where I like just fucked around with and I never beat. I wasn't really even into the N64 that much. So it was, it was, um, I was so into role playing games in the nineties that that though I beat a lot of those kinds of games, yeah. even the really obscure like quintet shit and stuff like that on SNES or, um, and then on PS one. I mean, there's a, I had so many games on the PS one that were, and I, I think if you looked at my catalog of games and they're somewhere in my mom's house, I think you could see like ninety. I probably have like fifty plus PS one games, mm-hmm. and you would see forty of them are RPGs probably, and yeah. then I have like the occasional like Metal Gear Solid or um, Tenchu or something like that or Bushido Blade. But yeah, I wish I that's I wish I connected with RPGs earlier. I would or especially JRPGs or whatever. Just in the fact of like Final Fantasy, I have no lineage with, right? Just because it never looked interesting when I try seven. Even people tell me how great it was, it just never worked for me, never clicked for me. And I wish I cared more about that. I cared period about that. It was years. a value proposition. I I understood uh, again. I don't agree with that value proposition anymore now that I have money. But when you're a kid and you are scrounging money together by games and stuff like that, it's like well, I gravitated towards that. Cause I'm like, this game takes for fucking ever. Yeah. To beat. Uh, That's wh- awesome. And it is. It's all yeah. as long as you like it. Yeah. Like now there are shit fucking JRPGs. I mean, I remember Saga Frontier being like one of the worst games I'd ever played. Beyond the Beyond, which was a yeah. we had we had a copy of that for from the podcast on PS1 is a terrible fucking game. Mm. You know, like terrible. I remember buying I was I bought that in nineteen ninety God, nineteen ninety seven. I was in seventh or eighth grade. I, and I, it was like the third or fourth PS1 game I'd ever bought. I had Final Fantasy VII, Castlevania, and I think um well, I guess I had a few more at that point. I like, probably the rap. I had like two brain or something like that. But um, I remember buying that game and make this game sucks. And that was like one of my one of my first like kind of letdowns where I'm like, I bought this game used too, so I couldn't return it. And I still have it. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't always work out that way. You don't always want to spend more time. But when you have time as a kid, and you know, I didn't have a job yet. I was in seventh or eighth grade. I'd, all I did was play hockey and go to school. And yeah. and you had a lot of time. So I think I connected with JRPGs be, because they're great. But I also think I connected with them because, you know, you can beat... Um, these platformers in five, six, seven hours. Some of these platformers were, especially in the S64 and PS1 era, were really short. Yeah. Um, and right those were rentals, too. you know? Yeah. Yeah. The Final Fantasy thing is funny to me because there's so, I've played, I think, all of them, um, at least a couple hours, but I never, the, the earliest one I beat was six. I never beat any of the ones before that. I got really far in four, but oh, I never. Four is so good. Four is so good, but I just, I got lost. I stopped playing and then I, I you know, five got is lost. Good. Five is back. really good too. Never, never really played too much of five, um, and then one and two were so early that like they're they're different. The port on PS One was a little weird, but um, not as bad as Chrono Trigger's port, which was fucking awful. I don't know. Um, oh no, but Origins. It, it, no, Origins was one and two. Anthology, I think, was Chrono Trigger. Chrono and six. Trigger, and, no, Chrono Trigger and four, and then five and six was Anthology. What was, what did we say the other one was? Origins Anthology and, and Chronicles. I think was the other Chronicles, one. Chronicles. That's right. Yeah, I think Chronicles was four and Chrono Trigger. I think Anthology was five and six, and then Origins was one and two. Um, and Origins came out late. Origins was, was like out in 2000, like it was 2003. Yeah. Time. Yeah. I, I remember, that was the last PS1 game I bought. Um, so, yeah, to me, it was like uh, th- those games were really special. But uh, when I think about actually like where my huge blind spot is, it's not even really so much in console gaming. I mean, I have massive blind spots in Genesis. Um, I have massive blind spots in Xbox and Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Do you play the Fantasy Star games? Yes. Um, but not all the way through. I never. So the original Fantasy Star is a Master System game, and I think I played a ROM of that like a long time ago. And I think they ported it to PS3, maybe on the Genesis collection, but I don't know about that for sure. Two I played um, when I was a kid, and then I played it on Wii. Mm-hmm. Um, and then three and four. Four is really considered like the epitome of those games, and and they all they all kind of blur together to me. They're, they're not they're not as memorable as. Um, as the Final Fantasy games, but I did play those games because I knew a kid when I was young who had a Genesis. It was family had a Genesis and an SNES and an NES and a Master System. And uh, rich. and um, so my exposure to a lot of early Genesis stuff, I remember being like, what is Fantasy Star? Because we we I didn't have any exposure to even the marketing or the the previewing cycle of I was so up in Nintendo's ass when I was a kid that like I didn't really know what the hell that even was. And so I remember playing that and like, you know, Streets of Rage and Golden oh, Axe and all these games. And I'm like, wow, Genesis is pretty cool. And I remember, I think I told the story about how when I was in sixth grade, I had my my friend Jason, who was several years older than me. He was in my neighborhood and we played hockey together. So he was like a buddy of mine. He was in ninth grade, I think at the time. He, we, I traded my SNES to him for his Genesis. And then my mom got really mad, maybe trade it back. And that was a great move because I wanted to play Shinobi or something like that. Oh, God. And um, <laughs> I was like, so I was like, I'm so tired of this fucking machine. Like, I just want like, uh, it was a, 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 my mom. Saved, my, mom my mom Blast intentionally processing. saved me. 
Um, but I think with PC is where like there are if you name almost any PC game, I never played it. Sure. Like with the exception, of, like I have some I have a soft spot for some random PC games. Like we've talked about Chips Challenge and we've talked yeah. about um, <laughs> you know, some of the Star Wars games like TIE Fighter and X Wing. Like I like those games. Yoda's um, Dark Forces Story or whatever the fuck. It yeah, was. Yoda's story and, and like a lot of Star Wars related <laughs> stuff I played. Um, like Doom and stuff like that I played, but there were there are so many like I have no lineage with Half Life. I have no lineage with Starcraft, like, with Starcraft, or yeah, like Tales or, from Monkey Island. World yeah, of any Warcraft. of the any of the adventure games. Poe, have- po, like I, I, you know, brought games to Poe all the time, and he brought me Full Throttle once on PC, and we played through that, and that was awesome. But at the time, I had no idea that like this was a hu- a huge genre. Tim Schafer, all this other stuff, like no idea. Day of the Tentacle, no fucking idea. Any of that stuff's happening. But the problem is, the trouble with this kind of question is, is like, yeah, like I had. I had watched and or played most of these games on console at some point, like just dawdled with them and messed with them. I don't think you have to have beaten a game to have experienced it necessarily. Mm -hmm. Um, But when it comes so like with like, you know, Genesis stuff like that's a blind spot per se, but it really wasn't. I had a Genesis later on and I went back. I mean, I I told you guys how I even found a new copy of Castlevania Bloodlines when I was in high school Mm -hmm. in like, which is 10 years after the game came out almost in uh in to- Toys R Us, I was like, what the fuck? Like, this is, th- I remember being awesome. I, w- I remember there was like 10 of them, and I'm like, I want to buy them all. Um, but with PC, like, I just don't even know. Sure. Yeah, like, you know like that's the thing where it's like, I don't even care. That's that's the other thing. It's like, I don't, like, I just don't, there's like, I, I want to go back and play. There's some games that, like, I have never experienced that we were talking about the DNA of games and how I think Miss Pac Man is so fundamental to play. Pong is a fundamental game you should play. Um, just to understand, like, really the embryonic state of games. Understand video um, ball better. And, and, you know, obviously like Galaga and, and Dig Dug and all those kinds of games. But um, Zork is actually one of those games that like I actually really want to go play because that is a seminal text adventure that is kind of the foundation for adventure games today. And maybe even in a sense role playing games. It's very similar to how like these mainframe space war games in the 70s are actually like kind of the prototypes for a lot of the games we play today in some way. It's like D&D. There would be no role playing games on the console without D&D. It's a similar kind of thing. And that, that's like a huge blind spot where that game's actually supposed to be really good. Um, but even when I was in high school and I was taking computer programming and I would do nothing but play games on my computer because I, and then I would just copy someone else's work. Um, but like one kid did all of the work for everyone in that class. It was the funniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. And people were just on the internet or like fucking around on their computers. And I remember this kid brought in like, um, police quest and King's quest and like some other of these adventure games where you have to like very specifically type in like oh God. walk right and yeah, open yeah. locker and like all like and I remember we using like game facts and stuff like that that was like my first exposure to even those kinds of games at all but man there's a lot of PC games that I just don't even know about yeah. nonetheless like um like I know you know even like Kid Chameleon on Genesis like I, I remember that game I don't know if I ever I think oh, I played Kid it. Chameleon was great <laughs> that was like the, that, that was a bir- that's a seminal like burned in memory of I got that for my birthday on Genesis uh, from my folks the day like the morning before I went to school came back from school with a bunch of kids we all played it there and then we went to leaps and bounds for the birthday party or whatever I was like fucking that's a day right there that was just an example to me of a game like where like I I know it I think I played it but at least I'm aware of it sure like, sure, like sure. someone could walk up to me and be like there's a hundred here's a hundred PC games that are the best PC games and I'm like I probably never even heard of half these games <laughs> and then I probably didn't play 40 of the other 50 on that yeah. list Act Razor is one I want to talk oh, about. Oh, it's Mi- a good one. Mitch always talks about. I'm like, this game sounds awesome, and I've never even touched it. Never Mitch even was the it. Mitch was the first person I'd ever met that had the love equivalent to mine of Act Razor, because that's not a game. That's a quintet game. It's a weird fucking game too. I um, I don't get it, and I don't. That like game it. is so so. That Act Razor is like one of the most unique games ever made. To to, to fuse God like God Simulator with side scroller is like really brilliant, um, and it's fun. And there's a way to perfect like get a perfect game in it too if you're like really patient um that's a must i think that's a must play game. actually is awesome yeah. awesome 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 game. i'm still just shocked that you you haven't beat a star fox or donkey kong country too I, yeah. I would love to do something where sitting with you specifically with donkey kong country too because that game the it the design is just so next level it's so good for for a platformer and it's not in the the challenge way of Mega Man. it's just more in the sense of it really to me defined the idea of exploration and the the way that they use the the bananas and stuff to lead you to secrets or to make you think and learn how the game's design works to tell you where to find secrets it it's awesome it reminds me of super metroid or super mario bros in the way like i, I learned something from playing that game um and also yoshi's island i would love to actually see i would love to see super mario world be- 2 yes oh uh, that game sucks dude no i hate like, i hate i, I, I so hate good. that fucking game i remember i remember 
No, a lot of people do love that game. Like I remember Mark Ryan had a real affinity for that game too. One of my and, favorite games of all time. And I was so like, good. I remember renting it. I think I rented it. I don't think I ever owned it. And I was like, what? Like, I, 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 I was so excited. I'm like, why is this so different and weird? That's I don't want this. Awesome. This isn't so what I want. want. Mario World again. Yeah, I was like, I just want Mario World with eight new worlds. That's all I wanted. What yeah, you doing? We waited Miyamoto? so long for that shit. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. Yeah, so uh, th- yeah, Star Fox, like I played them. Um, I don't remember ever beating them though. And I, I think there's probably when I really when I really sit down and think about it, there's probably a lot of games like that for everybody. Because no, there's for always sure. some, there's always, but I don't know. Like I don't like consequential games. I just don't know. I was I was playing a lot of random shit on the N64 though. And the 64 Star Fox 64 is the only Star Fox you have to beat. Like the rest of them. Like the Super Nintendo one, it's fine. If you play it, you get what it is. And all the rest of them are definitely like, only if you like 64, you'll find things you kind of like about that. I don't think I ever played a Star Fox game after Adventure, which was Dinosaur Planet, right? Dinosaur Planet became Adventure. Right, so yeah, that was the last Star Fox Assault, which was the GameCube one, which was 20% awesome and 80% garbage. Yeah, I didn't play that one. I didn't play any of the DS or GBA or any any of that kind of stuff once. I I just remember, I remember buying that just because... I used a jar of coins I had saved and went to Coinstar and, you're like, and dumped them it. all in and then I bought Star Fox, Star Fox Adventures. What's yeah. up, Crystal? You're a fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> yeah, my biggest blind spot is definitely, I've said this before, but the last generation, like the PS3, Xbox 360 generation, I just didn't play too much. I beat a bunch of the games, but yeah, like the Arkham games, never my thing. I tried playing Arkham Asylum and it just didn't grab me. Um, you get your second chance soon with that HD collection. Yeah, we'll see. What about so, Bioshock? Yeah, Bioshock. I love Bioshock. One. Um, again, though, never beat it. Like I got really far. I think it's kind of fucked up. Probably eighty percent through, and then I just stopped, walked away, and did other things. Not that it's not amazing, because that game I would put up there as like a holy shit, this game's incredible. Yeah. That's that's on the level. That game's on the level for sure. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, the Mass Effects I never got into. Wow. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, it's fascinating because like the you know, last generation would be my most comprehensive knowledge base probably but i think it's because of where you guys were oh, professionally sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. i think it's because of where i was professionally sure. at that time like that was when i was in college that's when i was like working God. fucking my ass off yeah for, you know and I just, it really was i don't have time to do this because it's you. either play games or you know make videos and i had to make the videos. yeah I, I mean i feel the same way about I, i've thought about in the past like gamecube ps2 uh, Xbox era was probably my least comprehensive except for GameCube for some reason I just went out of my way to like just play GameCube all the time except for that one year where I wasn't really playing games. You so. loved it because it had a handle but PS2 I was like I was a PS2 I kind of got over pretty quickly like I, I I had got it when it launched in October 2000 and I, by 2003 or so I wasn't really even playing it anymore. Dude like, that was a lifeblood that um, PS2. But t- so like that was probably my gen and I had an Xbox but I've just played like five games on it over and over again. So, so was the zombie. So did everybody. Uh, so it was Kotor. it was uh, yeah Kotor and Halo and, and, Halo and, and Jade Empire uh, Splinter Cell Rainbow Six and all that kind of stuff so um yeah so I feel that way about I, I can sympathize with you because that's when I was in college and it was just I just had other priorities but the GameCube I made time for good um as you should have and again like, I don't know we gotta talk about the GameCube sometime because I do I just I just call it I'd love to <laughs> you twisted know. his arm <laughs> I don't really know what the, like what I was thinking that that like I probably should have came around a little bit earlier. GameCube had great games. It was a great library of games, but I was like, my Stockholm Syndrome was at an all-time high during the GameCube era. Like, you wouldn't even known me then. You know? Well, <laughs> I knew you during the Wii era, so I feel like I kind of knew you during the GameCube era. <laughs> oh, my God. Colin, you going to so play funny. this PS3 game tonight? No, nah, man. I'm play, waiting for the Wii port. <laughs> I'm waiting for the Wii port. I'm going to go play Call of Duty on Wii tonight. What the fuck's wrong with you, Colin? <laughs> I wanted to believe. So speaking <laughs> of, of blind spots in video games and stuff, sure. we're talking about PC games. We yeah. don't play the PC games at all. We don't. The drivers. A lot of people out there do play PC a bunch games. Of nerds. So they were sponsored by this thing, Total War Warhammer. Okay. Totally outside of our wheelhouse. Sure. But did some research. Seems like it's getting good reviews. People, people like, like it. People like it. So if it's your thing, hey, this topic's for you. Sponsored Dork. by Total War Warhammer. What is Total War Warhammer? It's a fantasy strategy game of legendary proportions. Total War Warhammer combines an addictive turn based campaign of conquest and empire building with explosive, colossal, real time battles, all set in the vivid and incredible world of Warhammer fantasy battles. You guys ever do Warhammer at all? The, the, the painted Warhammer figures, figures no. and stuff? Yeah. I saw yeah. them. Anthony yeah. Gaius used to do them. Anthony used to tell me funny stories about about Warhammer. Like, he would be in the garage painting his figures or whatever, and then, like, someone would open the garage door and he'd, like, scramble and hide all this <laughs> stuff because he didn't know who was coming in. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the perfect match. Show Warhammer is a marriage made in gaming heaven. Warhammer is a rich, high fantasy world of perpetual war and massive battles. And Total War is a critically acclaimed, epic scale, conquest based strategy game. 
So when you put them together, that equals a gorgeous high fantasy world of perpetual war and conquest on a colossal scale, brought to life in hours and hours of gripping strategy gameplay. It's epic fantasy, total war style, no one's done Warhammer or indeed fantasy like this before. From the personal skills of your characters to 20,000 roaring orcs. No, well, how does that make you feel, Kevin? You like them 20,000 roaring orcs? Yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. Why do you think he likes orcs? I don't know. <laughs> Just, you know, the look. <laughs> As a fantasy <laughs> spectacle, it is unmatched. If you're a PC gamer and not involved, you're missing out. Factions that are all feel and play very differently. Each race is wholly different from their own unique characters, campaign mechanics, battle for the units, and play style. So, if you want more, release date, May 24th, 2016. Platform, PC slash Steam. There you go. Yeah. 